This is another sign of the times, a commentary and an analysis. Particles faster than the speed of light, does E still equal MC squared? A group of physicists from Italy claim they have observed the subatomic particles called neutrinos traveling faster than the speed of light. That of course is the cosmic speed limit declared in Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity. 1905. If they are right, and the jury is still out, Einstein might have some explaining to do. Among other things, a neutrino or anything else that went faster than the speed of light could go backward in time, theoretically. Many physicists who are quite sure that in fact E does still equal mc squared, whatever may come of this experiment, have expressed skepticism. But that has not stopped the ghostly neutrinos, which can sail through miles of solid lead with impunity, from achieving a sort of pop culture fame not seen since 1960, when John Updike published a poem about them in The New Yorker. The earth is just a silly ball to them through which they pass, like dust maids down a drafty hall, or photons through a sheet of glass. The neutrino news came from a group of physicists based at the Gran Sasso Underground Laboratory in Italy and doing business under the apt acronym OPERA. The neutrinos they reported on September 23rd in a paper and at a special symposium at CERN, capital C-E-R-N, the European Center for Nuclear Research had beaten a metaphorical light beam from CERN to Gran Sasso, a distance of 457 miles by 60 nanoseconds. The initial response of physicists assembled at CERN and around the world was that there was probably a mistake somewhere in the experiment. Einstein's theory is the basis of all modern physics and has been tested a zillion times, or so it seems. Technically, relativity to go faster than light, in fact, it forbids them to slow down to light speed. The hitch is that they would have imaginary masses, whatever that means. There is also the possibility, in some versions of string theory, of particles taking a shortcut through another dimension, but allowing anything to travel faster in light would open up the possibility of all kinds of problems with cause and effect, and even time travel. It looks too big to be true, said a CERN theorist. Physicists, in the meantime, have been flooding AR, capital X, IV, dot org, the Physics Internet Archive with papers debunking the opera experiment and defending Einstein. In one paper, two professors from Boston University showed that the neutrinos had been going faster than light en route to Gran Sasso. They would have lost energy at a fearsome rate by emitting other particles, causing distortions in the beam that were not seen by opera. Another paper argued that according to the standard model, the reigning theory in particle physics if neutrinos could violate relativity, electrons should violate it also, something that has also not been observed last week in what sounded like the coup de grace in some circles. Ronald A. J. Van Elberg, an artificial intelligence researcher in the Netherlands, suggested that the opera group had failed to make a relativistic correction for the motions of the GPS satellites used in timing the neutrino beams. The resulting error, he said, amounted to 64 nanoseconds, almost exactly the universe-shaking discrepancy the opera researchers were hoping to explain. That paper got wide attention. It was mentioned on a physics blog of the magazine Technology Review and other news sites around the internet as a possible explanation. If it stands up, this episode will be laden with irony, Technology Review wrote. Far from breaking Einstein's relativity, it went on. The faster than light measurement will turn out to be another confirmation of it. The opera collaborators and other outside physicists now say Dr. Van Elberg's analysis is wrong and reflects confusion about how GPS systems work. In an email, a spokesman for opera said the paper did have some errors, but he declined to go into details. You understand, well that we cannot reply to anybody claiming to have an explanation of our result 
in terms of trivial mistakes, he said. John Leonard, a neutrino physicist at the University of Hawaii, wrote in an email that while the opera results might not be right, they are still not easily dismissed. It is very unlikely to me that any distant observer will point out the error of their ways, he continued. If a screw-up or a mistake, it is probably in the details not accessible to outsiders. So, could there really be particles that go faster than the speed of light? There must be something that goes faster than the speed of light. Could it be like a premonition? Might it also be called prescience or prophecy, which is a form of time travel, like pictures or thoughts from the future being sent back into time or into the past, showing us the present and future events still to happen? And all these things are more signs of the times, the end times, transition days, is a time of extraordinary changes, happenings, and events. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered. It's also called fate or destiny, because it's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. Again, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 4. And God saw the light, but it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. 7. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. 10. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Yes, the Creator knows everything, and all these things are more signs.